Um, welcome to the revolution. This is the DevRev show. We're going to be talking about developer freedom uh, this week, or I keep saying this week because all my other shows are weekly, but uh, this one's not. This one's daily. Uh, well, I record them all on Friday. I'll be transparent. I record them all on Friday, but uh, yeah, I'm going to be releasing them weekly. Anyway, um, I got a question in from Kyo. Um, and for those of you who aren't on the mailing list, uh, I sent an email out. He emailed me back. Um, that's where a lot of these questions came from. I had one from Twitter. Um, I'm hoping to get a few more on Discord. But yeah, I, I'm just answering these questions off of there. He said, I want a remote dev job. I've sent a ton of applications, but zero responses. So, Kaya, where do I start? Um, first of all, sending in applications is typically not the most effective way to find a job. Um, I outline this in Get a Coder Job, but I'm just going to start here. Um, sending in applications, what what generally happens when you send in an application? Send in the application. The person who screens through all the applications gets overwhelmed. <laughs> and um, so they, you know, they don't respond to everybody. And then eventually they'll get desperate. And so then they'll they'll go and they'll actually force themselves to go through the applications. And they'll just go through enough of them to get, you know, a handful of candidates to come in and hope that one of them works. That's 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 essentially what you're fighting against when you're sending in applications. And then the other end of things is that getting a remote job, um, we're still not to the point where remote work is completely mainstream. And so a lot of companies are not 100% comfortable hiring remote workers, even if they are remote companies. Um, so what they're looking for is they're looking for somebody that's highly experienced that they trust to work on their own without being supervised. So that's the other end of things. So what you're really fighting against is you're fighting against a system that a, like I said, doesn't reward you for filling out applications. Uh, so way. I've talked about that on a few other episodes, um, but get out there, meet people, uh, get to know them and then talk to them about where they're working and get a job through them. Um, and then the rest of it is, is okay, then how do I get them to hire me remotely? Um, I'll admit, this is a lot easier for senior de developers than junior developers. It just is. And the reason is, is because uh, they feel like senior developers can solve more problems without needing help. Um, and they're probably right. But I've found plenty of junior developers that are sharp enough to figure out the answers on their own, figure out the answers through Stack Overflow, or most companies, they have a company chat like Slack or something. And if you're really after helping people out, then they just get on there. Hey, I've got a problem. Can you help me out? And then off you go, right? Uh, somebody will hop on a video chat with you. You share your screen and you get your help. Um, and so if you can kind of explain away some of their concerns that way, that but the other thing is, is that, um, it, again, if you put some videos up, here's how I do things. Here's how I solve problems. Um, you know, I mean, you want to make it content, right? So it's, here, here's how to build a Twitter clone, but then you work through some real issues. You know, you debug a problem on there. Um, then when you actually talk to somebody, you know, not applying, when you actually talk to somebody about getting hired to do a remote job, you can say, hey, look, um, I'm, I'm pretty accustomed to working through issues on my own. Here are a couple videos where I've done that, you know, and, and then you can kind of work your way through it because then they're not as worried about you working unsupervised on your own. And you have, they, they feel like you have the skills to, to do that kind of thing. Uh, the other thing to keep in mind is that if you become extremely proficient in something like Slack, then you can also say, hey, look, I'm a prime candidate to work remote because I know how to leverage Slack in order to communicate. And uh, you know what? I'll be there consistently. Um, I'll show up for all of our uh, video chat meetings, blah, blah. And you, you can make it happen. Um, one other thing just to keep in mind as far as remote goes is that with some companies, and this happened to me at one contract I worked, um, the contractors and remote folks are generally the first ones to get cut if there's any kind of budget thing. So, uh, you know, just keep that in mind. But, uh, yeah, the main thing is, is I would just get out there. I'd get to know people, um, you know, interact on some online communities, find some people that work remotely. Um, I have tips for finding those people in my book. Um, but generally what it boils down to is if you do a search for people, that have remote in their job title, you can go and track a lot of those folks down uh, that way on LinkedIn. 
And then from, from there, then you can start looking at the companies they work for and see if those are companies you want to apply to. Um, and by apply, I mean, go track down who's doing the hiring, get to be their friend, and then mention that you're looking for a job, not send in your resume and hope that somebody gets through it eventually in HR, because that's not going to work for you. Anyway, help I um, but, but yeah, that's, that's the way I would approach that. Um, I also didn't see what your level of experience was. And like I said before, it's easier for seniors than juniors to make this work, but I've seen companies hire junior developers and be perfectly happy with them being remote, especially if they're remote first, uh, team, or if they have, you know, a, a large number, a, a large number of their members of their team remote, um, then they'll hire junior devs cause they can just essentially teach them how they communicate. So that may also be something to consider is if the whole team or a lot of the team is already remote, that, that may help you do that. And again, doing that LinkedIn search trick will probably help you out there. So yeah, that's what I recommend. Um, and uh, good luck with it. Uh, I, I really don't think it's, it's that much of a stretch. Um, one other nice thing with, um, I noticed that your name is Hispanic or something. And so let me make another assumption here that you're in South America or something. A lot of times the wages lower where you're at than they are in the United States. And so if you can demonstrate that you've got some really, really heavy hitting skills and that you're willing to work remote for a U.S. company, you may be able to get a job that pays you really well for where you live and saves a U.S. company a bunch of money. And so then you can get a terrific job that takes good care of you and, and work that out. But anyway, th th those are my thoughts there. Uh, there are a lot of other things that go into this, but yeah, that, that's generally it. And again, the, the job is basically a transaction. You give the company the outcome that they want with their product and their customers, and then they turn around and they pay you and take care of you. And so, you know, you, you've got to show them that you can provide that value that makes it worth it for them to spend the time and money to keep you on board. So anyway, that, that's it. Kyle, good luck. And uh, yeah, I'll be back next week with more episodes.